Hi, welcome back to this second hour of Free For All Friday on Focal Point. If we talk, Brian Fisher is my name. I want to talk about immigration this segment. I am determined to do it. I've got a stack on immigration I've been carrying around for two weeks. I'm finally just going to do it. I'm just going to buckle down. We're going to talk about uh, uh, talk about immigration. One of the things that triggered it is President Obama has been honoring Cesar Chavez. Now, Cesar Chavez has been refashioned by President Obama and other activists as some kind of civil rights activist on behalf of Mexican immigrants. He was nothing of the sort. Cesar Chavez was born in Arizona. He was as American as you and me. He spoke fluent English, and he spent a good part of his time opposing migrant workers coming across the border from Mexico. Why? Because they lowered wages for American workers. Where have we heard that before? We've heard that from people that are using common sense to think about the immigration issue. Jeff Sessions has talked about this over and over again. Heritage Foundation talked about this. Harvard University has done a start, uh, study about what illegal immigration will mean to wages. They will go down. If this nation is flooded with low-skill workers who are willing to work for bottom-level wages, wages are going to uh, drop. Here's a piece from Neil Monroe, Daily Caller. Chavez is a hero to progressives, but he actually waged a campaign against low-wage immigration. Obama's attempt to whitewash Chavez's stance came during a short speech that he gave in the White House to the producers, actors, and supporting crew of a new movie about Chavez. The movie, directed by a Mexican, converts the union leader into a civil rights supporter of Mexican immigrants. Uh, Chavez was born in America, viewed himself as an American. Listen to this. His greatest wins were in the 1970s when he managed, listen to this now, listen carefully to me, this is Cesar Chavez, Mexican nationality but an American citizen, a virulently, vehemently opposed illegal immigration. In fact, he actually went to the border with Mexico to stop, to be a physical presence, to stop me Mexican migrants from coming across the border. His greatest wins were in the 1970s when he managed to triple farm workers' wages and boost mechanization by reducing the legal inflow of strike-breaking Mexican Bracero laborers. Chavez called the illegals wetbacks. This is a racist term. Most Hispanics are going to find that to be an offensive term. I'm not using it. I'm just quoting Cesar Chavez. He's their hero. He called them wetbacks uh, because they swam across the, um, the, the river, the, the Rio Grande River. And he called them strike breakers. So he says, you know, you think about the union. I mean, the worst thing you can be for a union guy is a strike breaker or a scab. This is exactly what Cesar Chavez called these migrants, even the legal ones from Mexico. They called them strike breakers because they bypassed his picket lines. Listen to this. As, this is Cesar Chavez. As long as we have a poor country bordering California, it is going to be very difficult to win uh, strikes. Now, the unions at first, and remember, he organized the farm workers' union. These are people living and working in the United States of America. And when Cesar Chavez was leading them and organizing them, he stopped the flow or reduced the flow of Mexican migrant farm workers. What happened to farm workers' wages? They tripled. By reducing the flow even of legal immigrants from Mexico, and this Bracero program was a legal deal. You could come in, seasonal workers, you could get a permit, you could come in, stay for a time, take your earnings, and go back home. And I theoretically have no problem with that if we can find a way to make sure we, we, that these people leave when their, their time is up. But the point is, by resisting even the legal flow of migrant farm workers, he raised the wages of American workers by 300%. Now let me ask People that are sitting out there listening, how would you like to have your get a 300% increase in your wages, your salary? Would anybody, would anybody like that? Well, what Cesar Chavez teaches us is one of the ways you're not going to get that, you are not going to get that unless you reduce the flow of workers across our uh, southern border. Now, since the Democrats have jumped into bed with the illegal immigrant community, listen to this. Since then... 
farm workers' salaries have dropped below the level won by Chavez, along with the salaries of many other Americans who are forced to compete with low-wage legal and illegal immigrants. So once again, you see that these democratic policies, these socialist policies, they are hard on the little guy. They hurt the little guy. They do not help him. Now let me uh, grab clip number seven, uh, Rob, if we can. This is a Telemundo anchor Jose Diaz-Balart. And I've got a story in the stack about why the Republicans are even doing this. It's money. You've got leaders of the Republican Party are out there. Uh, Bob Goodlatte from Virginia, conservative guy, but he's a big-time supporter of amnesty. Why? He's out there in Silicon Valley trying to raise money for the Republican Party. These are the people that want the cheap labor. And they're telling Bob Goodlatte, you got to cough it up, buddy. you got to come across with some amnesty legislation or the coffers are going to dry up. We're going to stop giving our money to the Republican Party unless you can flood us with cheap workers. So the Republican leadership is completely selling out for the sake of money. They are worshiping and serving the God mammon instead of taking care of the best interest of the United States of America, including the little guy who gets hammered by the competition with low-skill workers, uh, workers from outside our borders. Now here's Telemundo anchor Jose diaz Balart. Now, uh, immigration reform's going nowhere, even though John Boehner's going to hack and flack for it. Bob Goodlatt wants it. They've only got 19 Republicans who are signing on to it. And this is a battle that we're going to have to fight because Obama wants it, John Boehner wants it, Harry Reid wants it. So it's going to have to be us. It's going to have to be the grassroots against the ruling class Republicans and the Democratic Party. They're lined up against us on this one. We're going to have to win this fight just like we did back in 2007. But there is a danger on the horizon, and Telemundo anchor Jose diaz Balart talking to Rachel Maddow, tells us what that is. Clip 7. I think he's going to wait until uh, August. If nothing is done in the House, I wouldn't be surprised if he starts uh, making some very controversial uh, executive orders to mitigate the uh, pain uh, of p millions of people who face deportation. Okay, so he's saying Obama's just going to do it by executive order. He doesn't get legislation. He's going to say, forget about it. I'm just going to go ahead and issue orders uh, as the imperial president and get it done. Let's drop down to clip 20 if we can, Rob. This is Marco Rubio talking to Peter Cook of Bloomberg. And again, he's admitting that immigration reform is unlikely with President Obama. But I want you to listen carefully to uh, what he says about what's coming down the pike. Uh, Rob, do we have clip 20 ready to go? The Marco Rubio clip. Okay, let's listen to Marco Rubio talking about immigration. I don't have any regrets. My only regret on immigration reform is we couldn't arrive at a solution that brought on board more people so that we could actually get it done. I think it's going to be very difficult now to do anything comprehensive in Washington. People don't like to hear this, but it's true, given the lack of trust in this president that particularly Republicans have. The argument that we continue to hear is you're going to go ahead and do the legalization, but that's going to be linked to enforcement. But then the president is going to pick and choose which parts of the enforcement he moves forward on and which ones he doesn't. And we're going to end up with all of the legalization and only half or none of the enforcement. So Marco Rubio is saying, look, what reason would we have to trust President Obama to enforce any laws that we would pass? But the worst thing that Rubio said, my only regret is that we didn't get amnesty done. That's my only regret. So he's still oriented that way. Paul Ryan's out there, quote, still working hard to get votes for amnesty. Back in two.